I'm gonna show y'all how I basically created a really simple Wordle slash connections game in, I think this took me like, honestly, two or three hours to make. It was really, really fast. I did this using React, GitHub Pages, and ChatGPT. So I think, you know, if you have some experience with code or even none at all, ChatGPT can really speed up the process of making an app and make it kind of a little more fun, I think, because you're not in the trenches doing very simple stuff. It will kind of do the simple stuff for you. So let's get into it. So in terms of coming up with an idea of what to code, I feel like this is often the hardest part, especially when making a game. Something that I was thinking about was I used to play this game called Mastermind, which basically looks like this if you're familiar with it. What happens is somebody is hiding these four dots here and then the other person is guessing different colors. And I believe it's that you get a red if you have something in the right spot and then a white if you have the right color but the wrong spot. And there's actually a version called Mastermind Word which is the same concept except with words. And when Wordle came out, I was like, this is just Mastermind Word. It's the exact same game. Mastermind Word is a board game. There's four letters versus five, but it's basically the same concept as Wordle. So where I started with trying to brainstorm ideas was literally looking up vintage board games word. And I was just kind of looking at different boards to see if I remembered any of these from my childhood. And I was kind of thinking of at first something like Boggle except in a hexagon. And that was kind of too close to spelling bee, I thought. But basically by just kind of brainstorming here, looking at different things, you know, here's Catan, for example, trying to bring in elements of lots of different games, I was able to come up with the game that I wanted to create. And once I had that settled, I kind of wrote out all of the requirements for the game and I made like a sample problem and I didn't need to have every single thing figured out but kind of just having an idea of what I wanted to build using mood board inspiration from games that existed I think it's totally fine to kind of pull from what's there and kind of make your own spin on it. Okay, so this was kind of what I wrote up at the beginning to kind of frame the game. So this was kind of what I was going for here. And then I wanted to keep it really, really simple. So I ended up using a GitHub Pages React template that I found. So I can link that down below. But basically I used this one here, which makes it really, really simple. I went through these tutorials, so I just made an empty repo. What I did so that I could have the domain, because I called it Wordicted, is I just created a new organization in GitHub and then I created the repository within that organization. That's how you can have the domain specifically. And then I just went through these steps here. I created a React app, etc., all the way down to the end where I configured it to GitHub pages. And this made it really easy to just deploy everything. So now I can go to wordicted.github.io. Oh, and I have already done today's game, but if I open up an incognito window, that's just because I implemented cookies so that it saves your progress so that I already did the game. I don't want to do it again because it's one game per day, kind of like Wordle. And then basically here, what I've done is you basically know that the words are length five, length four, length six, and length five. And these are all of the letters it can be and you can shuffle it. It's definitely better on desktop than it is on mobile right now. And then what I did is you can try to get Guess something you could say also there is no spell check currently so you can really guess anything but let's see what's a word that I can make with these letters range so it shows you that it was an incorrect guess but it's kind of giving you some of the letters here and then if you want to see a hint Penny is a funny dog rescued from Seattle this game was originally named for her so I changed the name to we dicted but it was originally called Penny's game dog you might think I obviously know the answer already, beagle. And then you can go through and kind of guess the rest of the words using the letters that you have. And Corgi. You can copy and paste this. Nice job sharing with friends. Yes, this pop-up is not that great here. But yeah, it was super easy to deploy. Obviously there's some issues. For example, if you inspect this, this is like the actual deployed GitHub version. Oh, I still have some console logs, so that's something. But I think that you can, yep. 
you can see all of my solutions here. So this is something that in the original Wordle was also an issue. Like the creator just made something like this and then he just had hard coded in all of the solutions. So that is something with mine too. And then there's some other issues like I think probably making it mobile friendly would be the next step here. But yeah, had a fun time doing that today. So this is your sign to, to just code something if you're kind of feeling like making an app and you're inspired. It was really straightforward. Honestly, I ended up using, and let me show this here, chat GPT to do a lot of the simple stuff. So for example, when I cloned the repo, this was like the beginning code that was here. And I literally made it do like the base of my project. So can you change this so that it has a field for input? When you input it, it checks if the word is hello. And then, so this basically made like a user input tool that I could use. And then when I did that, it had an input thing. I wanted it to work with hitting enter. So a lot of this code, I ended up using the boilerplate from ChatGPT. And then I asked it to add on features or when it wouldn't do it correctly, I just coded the features myself. So really how much of this did I code? I don't know. Okay, see, look, then I said specifically set up this game. First, make a five by five grid explaining what you're doing. A user can enter these words. It kind of set it up for me. It made this initial grid with these initial words and then later like I wrote functions to kind of randomize this grid and I kind of fixed some of this a bit was buggy with handling guesses and stuff but really for getting the setup it was really convenient so if you're not using chat GPT when you're coding you're probably the one making something way too complicated or sensitive for chat GPT or to refusing to adapt and I would definitely recommend just trying it out for things like this that are really straightforward it's really nice I find to have some of the base stuff set up so you can focus on the more complicated parts of the problem. Like something I wanted to do was the slow wordle reveal of letters throughout the application and it ended up being kind of confusing. I asked ChatGPT to do it and could not comprehend what I was asking it to do. So just I feel like I ended up coding the more interesting parts which is what you want to do anyway. So kind of a, a good thing about AI I think. So the last thing here is I'm just going to take y'all through the code that I ended up writing and I know this is not the most amazing professional code ever. It was definitely kind of like a hackathon for myself. So basically I wrote most of the code in the default app function that comes with the React boilerplate code. And if you look at the bottom here, this only ended up being like 300 words. I did end up making separate files for some extra components. Like I needed some specific buttons because I wanted to do a little bit of styling. And as you saw earlier, I have a solutions.js thing which has some solutions. And I also had a utils file that had basic things so this is how I did the cookies. So I'm not going to get into that because it's kind of too much for this, but we're just going to look at the basic app that I set up here. Basically what I did was I set up the game. What I did was I made the date that I created this game and then I assigned it a game number. So if you know at the end of Wordle and it's the same with Wordicted and maybe I need a different name because it's kind of hard to say that name, but it'll say like Wordle number 295 or whatever. So I made the first day that I created the game the zeroth game and then they're gonna index up from there but that way I could go into this dictionary of solutions that I had set up and I could just pull the relevant game for the day and that would make it easy for me to like change things down the line and so basically from there I knew what the solution was gonna be so that was like the list of the four words that are the answer and then I also had the hint here for each day there's a specific hint and then I basically created the grid this basically shuffles all the letters together and creates the grid that you see initially this was a useful function because I ended up reusing it. Then because it's React, I used a bunch of use states to kind of give the initial state of everything. Can kind of ignore this history again. That's stuff that I did with cookies. But basically use state is the React way of creating a variable. So we have like grid and set grid where grid is the variable and set grid changes that variable throughout time. And then these are some boilerplate functions that ChatGPT wrote for me. So handle input change, it basically just updates the state with the input change. Handle guess, which updates when you guess a word. So this just actually just calls make a guess, which is the function that I end up writing, which is the majority of things here. Handle key press, handle shuffle, handle copy to clipboard. That's just for the end when you get like wordicted number one and it says how well you did. And then I had some basic validation to make sure that each guess was valid. So that was just in here. And then so for the more complicated 
delegated functions reveal word. So this is basically in my make guess function if the user guesses a correct word. So here's the case where user made a correct guess. So the words for the day includes the user input. Then we call a reveal word. And what reveal word just does is it goes through the words, it figures out which one we're supposed to reveal, and then it updates the grid that the user sees to show that specific word. And then we have a slightly different one, which is reveal letters. And this one I'm kind of still workshopping depending on what people like. But basically what I did here for reveal letters is the case where the user makes an incorrect guess. So it goes through the grid. Oh, this is where I have my console log. So let me just delete that. It basically goes through the grid and finds the first instance of every letter that the user guessed and it reveals it anyway just so that the user has some clues about what is going on in the game and they're basically seeing more and more letters revealed and then at the end there's just a couple parts to this game so there's the hint button this is one that i made in a separate component and actually ChatGPT wrote that so that was useful and then we basically have this stuff here for all of the guesses so it will show you the correct guesses that you've made and also the guesses that you have so far. We have the grid, which is basically all of the letters. So it's basically mapping each of the letters and it's also deciding what color to show them depending on if you're currently typing the letter or not. Down here, we just have the simple input thing where the users input the guess and I call my functions to handle the input change and the key press and on click or on enter it handles making a guess. And then we have this last section here, which is if the board is finished. So I just had this little variable here. If the game is not finished, do this. But if it is, we'll come down here and we'll just show the end screen, which is nice job finishing the game. It shows you like how many sunglasses emojis versus devil emojis for the number of attempts that you had. And then it made it share with friends. And that was a little bit complicated just because I had to use a ref to copy to clipboard. So that's why I'm writing all this funny code here. But yeah, and one great thing also about this boilerplate code is that you can just deploy it from your command line. So you can just update the website from the command line and you can see how the progress is going in GitHub. Again, not gonna get too much into that because I think it's a little confusing. Today is a new day from when I coded the app the first time. So I just wanted to film this because I'm gonna be adding a couple of features to my app. So then I thought, oh, might as well film it. The main thing that I want to get done today, I've been just fixing a couple bugs that my friends have found and things like that, but I want to make the UI a bit better. I'm not really going about this in the most methodical way. I think that if I had some more resources and friends who wanted to work for free, I would have some of them design a UI, maybe in Figma or even with just mockups. That's just something that personally I'm not that good at, so that's why what we're creating here, I think the UI could definitely be improved, but I don't have the resources to do that right now. So instead of drawing anything out, I just envisioned what I wanted in my head, and then I'm gonna go and code that. So you can kind of see the beginning of it here. My main idea was from the previous version of the app, there's just kind of letters on the page in lines. I want to make it look and feel a little bit more like tiles on a board. So kind of like Bananagrams or Scrabble when you dump out the tiles, I think that would be fun to see all the tiles. And my friend gave me a suggestion just if I want to keep it in a grid format, shout out Jesse for this suggestion, I can just add blank tiles so that it actually makes a grid even if they're not the right number of letters to make a grid. So I'm going to go ahead and implement that. The other reason I want to do this is because I think the input field the way that I have it now on mobile is kind of confusing. Basically you click the input field and then the keyboard comes up and it shifts the whole app up the screen and then you have to click guess and basically there's a lot of movement with the app on mobile and I kind of think that most people playing this game are going to be playing it on mobile so I want to accommodate that first. So I'm going to be working on that a bit and yeah we'll see how much of that I actually get done. Okay, as always, it took me longer than expected, but I just finished what I wanted to get done today, so I'm super excited. I can do a screen overlay now of what I have. So here I'm basically using Chrome DevTools to show what it would look like on an iPhone in Chrome. This is not super comprehensive because, for example, I use Safari, and I know the Safari formatting is a little different, but this is what I have, so just change the font up here. I made this grid here. Initially, I had it be always a square, but then then I was thinking, you know, as you keep guessing more words, it kind of gets a little bit confusing because there's so many blank squares. So what I did now, and I know the answer to today is it's genres. 
is I kind of eliminated some of the squares so that it's not super filled with blank squares. I think it looks a lot better. I think the main things I need to add are a information, like how do you play this game? And then also the actual guessing of the words. So where it says comedy right now is super ugly. <laughs> so I don't like that. And yeah, I'm looking for a new name for this game. I don't love the name we're dicted. So if you have a name for the game, please comment it down below. Would love to hear from you. And if I end up picking your name, I will reach out to you and give you some sort of prize. So please brainstorm a good name for this game. So thanks so much for watching this video, taking the time to code this game with me. Let me know if you have any questions down below or if you find any bugs or have suggestions for things that I should add or change. And I will see you in my next video.